and welcome back to Nathan Bell's podcast. Today, Nate would like to talk about the 10-year-old girl who got stabbed in Lake Macquarie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I found out about this on um, a Lake Macquarie chat room that I post into. that It came down the feed about the 10-year-old girl who got stabbed by her 17-year-old sister in Lake Macquarie about a week ago. Um, so, you know, I think about things like this a lot. I, I spend a great deal of time consumed with things like this and I read these sorts of cases frequently in the news because I read the news frequently. I read murder cases and I read cases about rape and kidnapping um, and people who die. Um, I've also been aware of a few sudden deaths um, in the last few years like the guy Eamon I knew who fell down the stairs and cracked his skull open and died. He was 43 and it just reminds me, you know, you just don't know and it's why I've come you don't know when you're going to die. It can just happen. And there's no certainty in life, you know. And I've said this in previous videos in my video about death and legacy. There is no certainty. I used to think, you know, as I've said, um, I used to think, oh, if I keep working, everything will work out and I will succeed and everything will be fine and it will be great. And a lot of people think that way. A lot of people say, oh, everything will work out. Not necessarily. You know, life is just random. The universe is just random. It's just random that the Big Bang happened and that everything came into existence. And the system of the universe, as the system, doesn't have any path or course that guarantees that you're going to stay alive or that your life is going to pan out well. You know, things happen and people die. Um, so I just think it's very sad, this girl, because, you know, she would have had dreams. She might have wanted to be an actor or a musician or she might have just wanted to be a lawyer or a doctor, but she had her whole life ahead of her and she would have had goals and she'd have friends at school who she played with um, and her life is over now, end, end of life. That's the end of her life and those things will never come to be. There will never be those things for her. That's the end of her story. Um, and in 20 years she'll just be a photo on the wall of a mourning family remembering when she existed and she no longer exists her life is over so it just reminds me of the finite nature of life and the fragile nature of life that we can all die randomly at any given time and you just don't know when your numbers up um, and these things happen all the time and as a busker I've seen a lot of these one punch hits you know I've been busking outside the nightclub and you see there'd there be a group of guys around and one guy gets revved up and offended by something and in the heat of the moment he punches the, another guy and then all of a sudden there's an ambulance there and 10 cops and the guys get loaded into the ambulance and you know you read in the news the next day that the guy's got permanent brain damage uh, and that he can't walk anymore or that he's paralyzed for life from the punch in the back of the head you know it ruins people's lives but that's what happens you know guys go out to have a night out on the town and then some rev head punches them and it ruins their entire life so things like this happen all the time and i've seen a few of those incidences where people in the middle of their life everything falls apart because of one incident particularly a violent incident everything falls apart they were in the middle of their life they were carrying on and they had every reason to think that they were going to go on to live a normal exciting life where they did rewarding things um, and where they had lived a satisfying life you know, this 10-year-old girl only two weeks ago had every reason to think that she was going to graduate high school, that she was going to get married, that she was going to have children, um, that she was going to live a normal, exciting life, but her life now doesn't exist anymore. She doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that's the end of her road, and that's what life's like. You know, things happen and people die. And I also think about um, her 17-year-old sister who has stabbed her to death. You know, what was the motive... Um, was it a heat of the moment thing where they're having an argument and she got she lost her, her temper in the heat of the moment and stabbed her sister to death? Um, people do that. It happens, and it's like I said with the one punch hits that I've witnessed. People lose their temper and they act out in the heat of the moment, and then somebody dies, um, and a great tragedy unfolds because somebody acted spontaneously in the heat of the moment. So, what was the go with the seventeen-year-old sister? who stabbed her 10-year-old sister to death. Was she acting out of rage in the heat of the moment because of some argument? Would have been some simple argument. Or perhaps she was on ice or something. You know, I'm wondering whether she was ice on ice, whether this was an ice rage, or whether um, she was having a psychosis or paranoia or a manic episode. But the police haven't said any particular details about why she did this. 
I'm sure we'll find out in coming weeks and coming months why she did this uh, and why she stabbed her sister to death. But, you know, I wonder whether, how she will feel and has she had a realisation of what she's done because she's going to spend a large portion of the rest of her life in prison now. <clears throat> She'll lose her freedom. And I'm sure, uh, you know, if she has any empathy at all, unless she's a total psychopath, she could also be that. Some people are that. Some people are total psychopaths and don't have any regard for the welfare of others or whether they end life or whether the people die as a result of their actions. Some people don't care at all. They're not born. They're born without that ability to care about the value or value other human life. So she might be a psychopath, but she's probably not. Uh, and she's probably stabbed her sister to death in the heat of the moment in some rage um, over some silly argument they had. And she's probably sitting in the cell at the moment, crying her eyes out, um, thinking, "Oh my God, I've killed my ten-year-old sister." So you know, she will have regrets about having done this and she'll spend, you know, probably 20, 30 years in prison. Hopefully when she comes out, she never does anything like this again if she ever gets out of prison. Um, but I'm sure if she has any compassion or empathy or capacity for empathy at all, she'll feel, she'll come to a realisation and say, oh, shit, look what I've done. Uh, and she'll realise she's done this terrible thing. And she's going to feel terrible about herself, you know. Did she love her little sister? Did they hate each other? You know, sisters and siblings don't necessarily have to like each other just because they're family. People don't necessarily like each other just because they're family. Did she hate, have hatred for her little sister? Did she despise her little sister? Or did she love her little sister and now she's going to have deep remorse and regret that she killed her little sister? Imagine killing your own sibling and how terrible you would feel if you'd done that and then in the heat of the moment and then all of a sudden you realise, oh my God, I've killed my sibling. You know, how will she feel? You know, because she's only a 17-year-old girl and I think a 17-year-old girl probably doesn't have the maturity or the sense about life to really understand the consequences of these actions yet. So she's going to come to understand the consequences of the actions she's done. She's murdered her little sister. Um, so she probably doesn't have... The maturity at this stage of when she was doing the act of killing her, she probably didn't have the maturity to realise, if I do this, this is going to end my 10-year-old sister's life and she will die and she won't exist anymore. Uh, so she's acted and then she's probably realised, oh shit, and now she probably does realise, oh my God, she's dead, she doesn't exist anymore. Um, you know, a 17-year-old doesn't have that maturity. You don't learn that sort of thing until later in life. You don't understand life and death till you get into your 30s or your late 20s. So, you know, a very bad tragedy. Um, I, feel, I, I feel for the sister who's killed her sister as much as I feel for the sister who's died. You know, because the 17-year-old, she's just going to realise what she's done and she's just going to live a horrific life of regret and remorse and guilt. Um, so her life will be terrible. Um... And she's only a child as well. They're both only children. But it just reminds you, you know, you just don't know in this life things happen. And this is the way it is. There's no right or... The universe doesn't have any sense of right or wrong. It's not a conscious thinking being that has a moral compass. Things just happen. It's just completely random, you know. And tragedies happen all the time. Um, you know, so I spend too much time reading murder cases and cases like this. Um, about people who get kidnapped and die. It's like I spoke about Gordana Kitevsky in my video about her and predators. Uh, these things happen all the time. And this is what I've realised as I've got through my 30s, is this is the nature of life. And it's very sad and very tragic. And it's why I've become very cynical, um, because I read too many of these stories. But yeah, I've been thinking about this case all week since it came up in the news. I just think it's a great tragedy. I've been mulling over it and stewing over it and just very devastated that such a young person has, their life has ceased and they have ceased to exist so early on in life and will never have the opportunities to do um, the things that I've had the opportunities to do or that other people have. Uh, and it you know, just makes me grateful that I'm still alive because I could have been murdered um, or I could have got cancer when I was five years old or I could have got hit by a car when I was five years old, or I could have been in a car crash or a plane act crash. I mean, you know, there's so many things that can kill you. It's just crazy. So, you know, and I had this realization of gratitude that I'm still alive a few years ago now. So I cherish every day that I live because I understand I've read enough of these cases. So many people die young in tragic circumstances. It's a blessing to make it to 37. Now, I'm blessed 
that I still exist because people die when they're five, you know, and they never get to do anything. I've had the opportunity to do wonderful, exciting things in my life, create art and music uh, and study politics and history and the world and science and I've come to an understanding of the world with maturity and I understand how life works. Um, so I'm just blessed that I've made it this far. I hope I keep going um, until I'm in my 80s and 90s because I could have been this 10-year-old girl who got murdered at 10 years old. That could have been me. I could have been a child who was killed or kidnapped or raped or murdered. You know, it happens. So just cherish every day that you live and know that every day is a blessing um, because we're all going to die one day. So there's my thoughts about the 10-year-old girl who got stabbed to death by her sister in Lake Macquarie last week. Drop a comment in the comments section about what you think about it.